Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh god, that's a striper. See it? Yes, I do. See the shape of it? Yeah. That's a perfect that's a that's a big striper. Okay. Okay. Oh, I just got picked up. I got picked All up. Alright, good. Oh yeah, fish. Good. Ready? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that big. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Oh yeah, big. Real big. Oh, it's stripping me. It is going downtown. Okay. As implied in the name of this show, almost all of the fishing we do here on the Fresh Angle takes place in fresh water. And this episode is no exception. Now, what if I showed you this? Look at it, look at it, look at it. I mean, he's almost spooled. Got it, got it. Dad, 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 take it, oh take my it. God. Get, it, get it, get it, get it. It's just a giant fish. <laughs> look at this fish. Do you still believe me? The truth of the matter is, we are right on the edge of where fresh and saltwater collide. River meets ocean, the magical in-between zone of brackish water where anything can happen. Schools of striped bass and bluefish slice and dice the water for bait fish, all influenced by the seesaw flux of the tides. It's a place to be, all right. A gateway to Long Island Sound a flowing and going habitat for anglers of all types. So sit back and see what happens when we push the boundaries of our own comfort zone as we target giant saltwater species in a freshwater river. Oh, got her! <laughs> she took it like a striper. Oh, good. Got her! Oh, yeah, better fish. Easy on that drag. Nice one. Nice. Take it off that. It's huge. Dude, you got a huge fish. It's so big. You got a huge fish, bro. This is why you buy saltwater hooks. Jesus. That was cool. Dude, this is crazy how sweet this is. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, this hurts so bad. <laughs> oh, that looks, you get your rod is bent. Yeah, it's good. We have an absolute giant on you. <laughs> I mean, so big. Uh, I think it's a blue, dude. Nice. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah, big fish. Real big. Oh, dude, it's a giant. Oh, my God. The Connecticut River. It's a watershed that runs through four states and extends all the way to Canada. The river is so special, it's not named after the state, but in actuality, the state is named after the river. Stretching 410 miles long, the amount of fishable terrain is overwhelming. But if you're lucky enough to live here, like I do, it doesn't take long before you run into someone with similar tendencies. Lucky for me, I got some guys on the inside. Meet Chad, Nick, and Phil. These guys have been fishing this area for more than 35 years, and they know this place as well as their backyard. Well, technically, it is their backyard. Every year during the spring and autumn, bait fish from Long Island Sound move into the river systems, such as this one, and the stripers follow right behind. 
These bait fish mainly consist of menhaden, known to the locals as bunker. And in the past few years, they have shown up in droves. And the fishermen show up just the same. In big boats, small boats, sea boats, and bass boats. Really, every type of boat. The result is an absolute feeding frenzy. It's like a full-on all-you-can-eat buffet with an unlimited guest list. The striped bass gorge themselves as they please on these defenseless schools of bait. At times, turning the river into a turbulent chaos above and below the surface of the water. If you're as lucky as I am to live here year-round, you will experience some truly incredible moments throughout the season. With fish that hit like a train, make punishing long oh, runs, yeah, sipping, sipping, and under the right conditions, bite all day long, causing sore arms and hard-slept nights filled with dreams of fish. <laughs> It's their numbers combined with their size that make them so much fun to catch. These fish are like oversized largemouth that can reach weights well over 50 pounds. Yeah? It's not a bad fish. It's a nice one. It's a nice one. Nice. Oh yeah, that's good. Nice it. Fun fight. I'll take it off there. Show me, show me. Take it, take it, thank you. Wow. Oh my gosh. You got it? Yeah. It's a big striper. She's, she's a she good took, one. She took it like a striper. She's good. She's long. Oh, top she. Of the, top of the mouth, top of the lip. All right, I'm, I'm gonna get the net. Dive one more time, please. <laughs> that's big. That's big fish, Dad. That wow. Oh boy. <laughs> Look at that puppy, huh? That's a striper. See it? Oop. I just got picked up. I got picked right, up. Good. Ready? Oh yeah! Oh yeah, that big! Oh, it's stripping me! It is going downtown! This is big fish. This is gonna be a minute. <laughs> My drag is not loose. Giant head shakes. <laughs> so crazy heavy. We ready to see her? She is close. I see a lot of white. So strong. Uh, you want me to get that net? Oh my god. Yeah, oh my god. Oh. This is just a giant fish. <laughs> Ready? Oh, and, it, and it happened again. <laughs> what a fish. Holy cow, this is so cool. This river is just loaded right now. Oh, she's, oh, she's ready to go. Yeah. You did it. You did it. The one thing you could rely on to remain consistent out here are the classic New England style shingle-sided homes that speckle the shoreline. But the rest of the conditions are fleeting. Pay close attention to the upcoming tides, weather forecast, pressure, and moon cycle. If you get them all to align at the right moment, you can strike gold. Suddenly, top water is the hottest technique on the planet. Oh yeah. It's not uncommon to have double or even triple fish hookups multiple times in one outing. Double, <laughs> triple. You got yours, you got yours. Got her. Doubled up. 
There, got her. Dubs, dubs, dubs. Got her, trip, triple. This is insanity, dude. They're just everywhere. Perfect doubles. Please don't hold me. I got you. I got you. Oh, got her. Oh, got her. Oh, yeah, big girl. Look at that guy, huh? Oh. Dude, this is crazy how sweet this is. <laughs> I got you beat. Oh, got her. Got her. There are few things better in the world of angling than a sizzling topwater fight. Her with fish ranging between eight and 20 pounds. She's on it, she's on it. It's not difficult to see why this becomes an addiction to so many anglers. Oh my God, oh my God. Woohoo! Oh I've experienced God, so some fish. truly incredible fishing over the course of my life. That was cool. And in terms of action and thrills, this get it, get it, tops get it, get it. them all. Oh my God, it's unbelievable, look at that. Long Island Sound and its tributaries are known to many as one of the top sport fishing destinations on the East Coast. I tend to agree. That's a big one, dude. That looks like a big one fish. Oh, I lost her. Oh, I got another one. <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> oh. Oh, is it right? See? Nice blue, huh? Oh. oh, my drag is not loose. <laughs> we are surrounded right now by stripers this size all around the boat. These things are so fun when they're all piled up like that. This one hit a glide bait. I'm fishing with musky lures because I don't have a lot of saltwater gear. It works pretty good. <laughs> Other days, catching your own live bait is critical to your success. Fish can surround your boat only to scoff at the wrong baits. But properly drift the right live bait rig and a seemingly peaceful moment can suddenly turn into a heart pounding battle. Yes, those are fish, yes. Oh, I'm getting bumped. Oh, no, it's a fish, it's a fish. Oh yeah, better fish. Oh, she's way out there. Oh man, she's heavy. Way better than the last one. You're going back up with a good move. Yeah. Didn't take long at all. She's close. Back off a little. Oh my God. You got a cow, bro. You got a good one. You got a good one. Oh. I mean, so big. <laughs> we came here. Wow, that's a nice fish. Dude, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Yeah. Oh my, Dude, look how many are with it. huge fish with it. It's Dude, huge. you got a huge fish. It's so big. You got a huge fish, bro. As you can tell, Nick is practically jumping off the gunnels at the size of this fish. She's a slab, all right, and bursting at the seams. Grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. Grab her. Too, but I want to make sure I got a good grip. Yep. Yes. Girl, we lift it. Oh my Dude. god. You did. <laughs> Dude, look at this fish. Okay, switch with me. Yes, sir. Oh my god. Oh my god, look at this thing. Oh, talk about an incredible fish, huh? Hip here in fresh water in the river, springtime. Look at the size of this striped bass. <laughs> oh baby! <laughs> oh god, cool! I'm so happy for you. I'm shaking, bud. As if there wasn't enough oh excitement already, Nick's rod doubles over while we still have this giant in the boat. Oh, move, dude! Mine's big too. Really? It's times like this I wish I had a cameraman on board.
I'm so excited because I got one and you freaking crushed a monster, dude. <laughs> this is what we came for, dude. <laughs> no one believes it's real till it's real. For a fish population that is supposedly in decline due to overfishing, the striper fishing in the river this year has been truly exceptional. Crab, it's big. That's the biggest fish of my life right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, this hurts so bad. <laughs> As catch and release becomes more and more common, the saltwater striped bass fishermen of the past now need to learn new techniques for the proper handling and release of fish for the future. It's a difficult thing to do, to change almost 400 years of tradition. Perhaps they can learn a thing or two from the freshwater community who has been practicing this catch and release technique for quite some time now. In particular, from musky fishermen who use large nets to let the fish rest after the fight. Oh, I got a fish. One thing's for sure, the regulations are here to stay and there's more change to come. Dude, it's a giant. As our planet becomes more and more populated, it's fisheries like this one that need to be protected to aid in its future health. Oh my God, we have an absolute giant on. He just stripped, I don't know, maybe a hundred yards of line off of him. He's, I mean, he's almost spooled. He has almost no line left. Don't force it, don't force it. The Connecticut River Inlet is a place I have been lucky to call my home now for a decade. But it's the guys that have spent their entire lives fishing here that truly own this place. They don't just know the rules. These are the guys that made them up. So I'm truly fortunate to have my friends, Chad, Nick, and Phil. Because without them, I would have to put an entire life's worth of hours on the water to learn what they were able to teach me in just one season. Their knowledge of this fishery has been slowly learned over the course of a lifetime. For a place that is loaded with great fishing guides, the Connecticut River Inlet is still a place where an engineer, a contractor, and an insurance broker can quietly hold all the answers to your questions. But as good as the local fishing guides are at putting you on fish, sometimes, all you really need are the right friends. <laughs>